So the topic here today will be on scales, and uh, this is something, a lesson I've wanted to do for a while, and I think tonight, tonight is the night. Um, you know, if you go online, there's a lot of different views on how to learn scales and different systems and all that. And, you know, my, I guess my opinion on this is since I've been doing this for so long and I teach every day is just, you know, you should be trying to learn scales and other things too, not just scales and chords and arpeggios or as many different ways as possible. Um, so then over time, you're learning to see the neck in many different ways. You know, so many of us learn these pentatonics, you know, and, and we're just up and down, up and down, right? And it's not really the best way to be playing all the time. You know, there's nothing wrong with this form, this up and down. It's just if that's all you always ever do, then yeah, you get boxed in, okay? So, but one great way here I wanted to show you is, again, this is just could just be one of many ways to learn scales. It'd be learning, using your cage system. So taking the five forms of the caged and picking a starting point and then working in a circle of fifths. So if I started here in A major, and this would be what I consider the, is the E form in the, in the cage system, right? So I'm an A, the fifth fret of the low E, right? And this is just my, you know, this is just a bar with an E chord. And then I know my cage, so I know that. That's my form for the cage system, right? So now, what we can do is you start at this point, and you start, we started in A in the E position. Now, if I move in, in fifths, then what's gonna happen is I'm gonna not only move through all of the keys, but I'm also gonna have to, in one position, as best as I can stay in one position, and then see the next key in whatever caged form that is. So I'm gonna go through this for you right now so it makes sense. So we gotta go a fifth. We're gonna move a fifth. We gotta go a fifth from A, right? Now you can start this in any key. You could start it in C and then move right from C, and maybe that's what I should have done, but I just kind of wanted to be in the middle of the neck here, and so we'll start with A, right? Um, so now a fifth from A, well, if I go up to the fifth degree of the A major scale here, A, B, C, A, B, C sharp, D, B, so E. So moving a fifth from A would be E major. So now in this position, I've got to figure out which cage position E major would be. Well, here's an E here at the seventh fret of the A string, and there's my root, the fifth fret of the B. That's the C form. So then I would use my C form for E, okay? Now we got to move a fifth from E. Well, if I play the fifth note of the scale, E, F sharp, D sharp, A, B. So now in the same position, what would I have for B major? Well, now I gotta find, I'm finding the roots. So B is at the seventh fret of the low E, it's at the fourth fret of the G, and at the seventh fret, that's the G. My G shape. Notice how I'm finding the roots. All right, so now I know my root shape, I know the chord shape, and then I know, I know my scale shape. Okay. A fifth from B. So we go up B, C sharp, D sharp, B, F sharp. So that's a fifth from B is F sharp. So realize I'm just going to the fifth note of every scale. And, and also, another way to do this is to realize that, like a power chord, that's what the power chord is. Or maybe you've seen like B5. That's what a power chord is, the root and the fifth. So, B, F sharp. So that's another way to figure this out. Just play the power chord and figure out what, what the next note is after root, and that's what a fifth, a fifth up would be from there. So again, a fifth from B would be F sharp. So now, I'm seeing my F sharp with the fourth fret of the D string, and the seventh fret of the B. That is my D, my D root shape. So again, I found my, I found my root shape, I found my chord shape, and then I found my, my scale shape. So then a 
it from F sharp. So once again, now I'm, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna just gonna play the power chord. So this is the root here, and this is the fifth here. We're all fifth from, let's see, sharp. All right? So now I gotta figure out, well, the octave of this C sharp would be at the fourth fret of the A sharp. That's my A root shape. So there's my root shape, and there's my chord. And then again, here's my. My scale shape. Okay? Then a fifth from C sharp would be, well, here's my C sharp power chord. There's the fifth, G sharp. Right? So now I can do my E form again. So, so there's E or G sharp, G sharp, G sharp. I got my root shape, I got my chord shape, E, and then the scale shape again. Right? And then a fifth from G sharp would be D sharp. So I'm back to a C form here. Or maybe I haven't done the C form yet. Oh yeah, we did for E. So again, I got my root shape, D sharp, D sharp, C shape root, there's the chord. And there's the... Keep going here. A fifth, and so far, notice how I've really stayed very much centrally located, okay? And this is really forcing me to have to see all the different keys, all of the different forms, right? So that was just D sharp. So, so, so a fifth from, from D sharp would be A sharp. Well, this would be, again, I'm trying to stay right where I was. If I was in the C form, well, here's A sharp right here. That was, would be the G form. A sharp, A sharp, A sharp. There's my root shape, there's my chord shape, and then there's my, my uh, scale shape. A fifth from A sharp is going to be F. Okay? Um, yes. So we go from, now we go... Well, here, we're here, so I'm going to do my D shape here, because here's F, and here's F. I got my two root shape, I got my chord shape, I got my scale shape. Very nice, all right. Okay. A fifth from F would be C. There's my power chord. I see this as my A shape. Root shape, chord shape, scale. A fifth from C would be G. So that would be E form again. Here's the root shape, chord shape, scale. A fifth from F or G would be, would be D. I could do the C form. There's D, there's D, the chord shape. There's my scale shape. And then a fifth from D would be A, and I would be back to A. Now, instead of doing the E form, I could do the, the G form here for A. A, A, A. Chord scale, sh uh, root shape, chord shape. Scale shape, okay? So you see the power of that? That's so for many of you out there, you know, you're very, you only practice in one key. You know, I, I, I teach all the time, and especially when I, when I jam with people, I find it in blues players a lot. Like it's like, you know, they only want to play in A or E. You, you know, you talk about doing it in like, you know, F or you know, C or something like that or B, and they're like, no, 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 I don't want to do that. I don't. So because they only practice in in one one position, right? Now we can do this for any any scale. This doesn't have to be major scale, right? I could take my A minor pentatonic scale, right? And start moving in a fifth from A minor. It's, it's gonna be the same notes that you just did. It's still gonna go from A to E, but you're gonna play in minor pentatonic. So if I was here for A minor pentatonic, then I would play the fifth from A is E. So I would play my C form. But now it's gonna be minor pentatonic. The great thing about the root shapes is they don't change. It doesn't matter what scale, what chord, whatever it is, 
the roots don't change. So this would be my C minor form for E minor. Right, notice I'm not, this isn't a lesson to teach you the scales. I'm assuming that, you know, if you're watching this, you kind of know these shapes and these forms, right? Okay. So, um, and then a fifth from, from E was B. So then again, it would still be my G form, but now it's the G minor pentatonic form, not the G minor pentatonic, just it's B minor pentatonic using the G minor form. Okay, so I'm not gonna go through all these, it's just you get the idea. It's just figuring out what the fifth of the next, of the chord you start on or note you start on, right? Okay, and this is just a great way. Now you can keep moving in different positions, right? So you can cover the whole neck and then you're gonna to start to realize that like when you play in other keys and, you, and, and then that's the other thing, like you, you need to make yourself jam and play in other keys. To, this is, so it's, it's funny because like people are frustrated, they don't wanna play in other keys because they're weak at it, but they don't ever practice on the keys to get strong at it. You know what I mean? Like, so you have to make yourself, I'm always practicing in different keys, always. Um, it's just, I just know I have to do that, you know? So, so this way you're really making sure you cover all of your, all of your keys and in one position, okay? Now for many of you out there, it's gonna, you know, it's, at first it's probably gonna be a slightly a slight daunting task I guess and it's gonna probably take you a while to have to see this but you know that's how it is and but what better way than forcing yourself to have to stop and really think and see this stuff okay um, so yeah so that's one way of using your circle of fifths method to to practice scales um, so again you know I'll, I'll end the lesson here with that uh, but just remember that you don't, you can practice scales in many different ways. You know, one way I've been doing recently is practicing a lot of my three notes. So this is A. So that's A major in three notes per string. So realize that the cage system has its, you know, maybe it's, it's con with the cage system is that you have one string that has two notes on it. And that kind of, you know, breaks things up from allowing you to keep a, like a, a constant stream of three notes per string going. So, so eventually you're gonna learn how to, to use to play three notes per string, right? You know, if I was in C, I would see my scale, C scale. This is in two notes, linear, two strings linearly. I just played the C major scale on the B and the E string going up linearly up the neck. Okay, so that's another way to practice. So if that's what you should take from this is that if this isn't one right way to learn scales, again, in my opinion, it's many different ways um, that over time then you just see the neck so much better. All right, if you have any questions, let me know. If you want a lesson, hit me up. Check out my website, stevemanthus.com. Uh, yeah, thanks so much. Uh, today's topic will be on scales. Uh, this is something I've, a lesson I've wanted to do for a while. And uh, I think today, tonight's the night to do it. And, you know, there's a lot of people or different people believe, you know, how, 